Hello, I'm Simon Hall with CCW Europe. We're at the CCW UK Exchange talking about all things customer management and customer experience. And here I'm delighted to be joined by Raul Aurora, the Senior Vice President at EXL. Raul, thank you for taking the time to sit down and speak with me. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, for, uh, for having me here. Pleasure to have you on. And by means of introductions, both the benefit of myself and our audience, I'd love to learn a little bit more about you and EXL. So I wonder if you can just take a deep dive into your professional background for us and maybe unpack some of the work you're doing in your current role. My name is Raul and I'm the Senior Vice President for EXL and I lead a business unit called Emerging Business Unit for UK and Europe. I've uh, been with the company for, for 18 years. And what I focus on is digital transformation using data and analytics and also look at generative AI. Uh, EXL as a company, we are a NASDAQ listed company in the US. Uh, we've been in business for 25 years and we've got 53,000 people across the globe. And what we focus on is data and AI led interventions for our customers. And we help customers embark on a data led journey. Fantastic stuff. And so the crux of what we're going to talk about here, and you just mentioned it, is generative AI and its implementation. And I think for most businesses right now, they're in the trial and or pilot stage with this technology. So two questions to kick us off then. The first is, can you share some best practices around how businesses can go about integrating this technology sure. into their op operational frameworks, right? And then secondly, what are the challenges and indeed opportunities in this area? That's a great point, and, and uh, you know, Gen AI or Generative AI is the buzzword all around. All our customers are talking about it. And we embarked on this journey almost 18 months back. Mm -hmm. So um, when, when large organizations are thinking about uh, you know, embarking on this journey of Gen AI, there are a few principles that we worked on. In fact, seven principles that can help organizations to decide as to how and when they should be uh, embarking on this journey. I think the first important thing is the alignment in terms of strategy. So AI has to become part of the organization strategy. Only then is it successful. It can't be run like a project. It has to come from the top. And when I say from the top, uh, and there's a second point, you know, it has to be at the board level. So it has to become a part of your board agenda and then alignment with the organization strategy. So those are two important things uh, to, to embark on the journey. And when you've really decided that you want to use Gen AI to solve large problems, the third important thing is how do you uh, look at your data strategy? Till the time you don't have clean data set, uh, moving into this journey becomes difficult. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you have a clear understanding of your data management, how clean your data is, and how can you use data to move into the AI journey. Mm -hmm. And the fourth important part is boosting your uh, data strategy in a way that you can identify used cases within the organization. So that becomes really important. Yeah. And then, um, you know, once you've decided the part of organization that will first uh, move into the AI used case, you know, start aligning the benefits and the outcomes that you would uh, look at, mm -hmm. right? So you start off from, uh, you know, the strategy, moved to the board, looked at your data strategy, looked at your data management, identified the used case, and then you really embarked. Uh, and and that will help you really demonstrate the value of Gen AI across the organization. That perfectly tees up my next question, and that is obviously choosing the right use case of AI implementation is extremely critical. So I wonder if you can share maybe one or two examples of how you've helped businesses integrate AI and some of the results and outcomes of these initiatives. Sure. Given that we work across sectors, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep it to uh, UK mm -hmm. uh, in terms of large organizations, um, you know, Gen AI used cases, as I said in my previous, uh, you know, question, that it can be across the organization. So when clients come to us uh, in terms of identifying that used case, there are two uh, aspects that we look at. One is how could AI really help uh, your internal employees? Mm -hmm. That's number one. Yeah. And number two, how could Gen AI uh, help 
your customers, your end customers. So that's a good place to start. Uh, and uh, for one of the large retailers in the UK, one of the largest uh, retailers in the UK, uh, we, we are a strategic partner with them. Uh, we went about identifying this used case first from an, a colleague standpoint or the employee standpoint. Uh, they have a you know, large contact center wherein they take calls from their members or customers. Uh, and what we saw that, you know, uh, the agents who are taking those calls can be helped using Gen AI. So what we launched for them was, built for them was Smart Agent Assist. And what Smart Agent Assist does it, you know, if you are on a call with a customer, it does a real-time transcript from uh, voice to text. So when you're taking that call and if you don't understand what the customer is saying, you know, the text is there real-time and you can start understanding what the customer is saying. And also, it does a real-time assessment of the customer satisfaction, mm -hmm. which can really help you uh, identify how customer is feeling and respond accordingly. Sure. You could identify vulnerability for a customer, which is a huge, huge yeah, issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a huge issue in the market today. And that helps agent to meet the regulatory requirement, you know, which, which they could have missed, That's right? Cool. Uh, uh, that, that's really critical. So smart agent assist today is like a, you know, buddy with you when you are, uh, you know, taking a call from, from, from the customers because it is, it is giving you the right nudges. It gives you the right customer sentiment. It does a real-time transcript from uh, voice to text. At the same time, it does a complete call analysis and gives you the insight, you know, real-time. Mm -hmm. Now, what this has done is, for this particular client, it has helped them reduce a lot of non-value-added stuff and, and led to an efficiency gain of almost 30%. So not only have we helped them reduce cost to serve by creating this efficiency of 30%, but we've also uh, really helped them improve customer experience because the repeats are not happening. You are understanding the customer sentiment real-time. So this is one of the examples. I mean, there are a number of use cases that we've created. In fact, there are more than 50 plus use cases that we have in the industry that we can talk about, but this should really bring it to life. Mm -hmm. That's great. And just pivoting slightly into the, the buy-in piece of this equation, obviously introducing AI, like many initiatives, mm -hmm. requires teamwork and it requires getting buy-in from a whole host of different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So with that, what strategies and tactics can business leaders adopt to foster a culture of innovation and collaboration within their organization? What is important is communication with the staff. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last example, I was talking about smart agent assist. The way uh, we went about launching it within the organization, there was a clear communication from the chief exec as to how they're looking at uh, bringing in Gen AI that can help uh, our colleague experience and customer experience. Yeah. So the first important part is communicate well in advance. Also talk about the outcomes that it will deliver because you're taking people on a journey, you know, and this is your own staff that you're taking them on a journey. Yeah. So it's very important for them to understand Gen AI will make their life easy, yeah. right? Yeah. It will help them reduce talk time. It will help them have a better conversation with the customers. So it's important that you talk about the outcome right at the start. Mm -hmm. Number three, a periodic update of how the project is moving has to be discussed at all levels, which I mean is at the senior level, but also for people who are consuming Gen AI. Mm -hmm. they, ha they need to be made aware of you know, how this will pan out for them. Uh, that's a really important part. And cross-collaboration is very important across various teams, mm -hmm. i.e., uh, you know, if you're deploying something with your front-end team, uh, it's important that your back-end team is aware of it, and they should be expecting a change in how the front-end team is uh, responding to uh, certain queries. So that alignment, cross-functional teamwork is really important. So those are few things uh, that, 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 that we should keep in mind. And also defining the guardrails. 
as to what Gen AI can do and what uh, Gen AI can't really solve for now. So defining it very clearly helps because you don't want technology to then uh, start misbehaving, which will have an impact on your customers and employees. So defining those guardrails are really important for, uh, for, uh, for customers, yeah. Last question for you then, Raul, and it, this is the speed with which this technology is advancing and evolving is quite unprecedented. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep yourself updated with the latest trends and goings on in the industry? Given that uh, we work with large organizations, uh, so what we, what we typically do is we understand the big industry problems that AI can solve. And as we start deploying AI across these industry problems, we ensure that we are making it quite accessible uh, to our staff from a use case standpoint. And so for the customers, without, without sharing anything which is very, very confidential from a customer standpoint, but generic use cases, what benefit did it uh, give to the customer? So those are readily available uh, for, for our employees. That's number one. Number two, uh, we've partnered with uh, a lot of universities uh, EXL as a company has partnered with uh, UCD in uh, Ireland wherein we train our own staff, uh, we identify used case and then we have you know, uh, uh, the, the, the college helping them to develop those used cases. Mm -hmm. Number three, I think the important part is uh, this is an evolving uh, market as you rightly said. So uh, having that trigger internally which is creating used cases within the organization. So I'll, I'll give you this example to bring it to life. When we were, uh, 18 months back, when we were uh, embarking on this journey for generative AI, uh, first thing we thought was we have to create used cases within our organization. Mm -hmm. So we have to you know, do it for ourselves before we start selling it to our customer. And there are three used cases where uh, we developed within the organization, uh, within EXL. The first one, we called it Employee Wiki. So every time you're joining EXL, right, and you're part of uh, the organization and you have queries about your leaves, policies, payroll, mm -hmm. you know, there used to be a team that used to help you. So we used, uh, you know, uh, we, we developed Employee Wiki, which is a generative AI tool. Again, you can really, do a real-time uh, conversation and get answers to all your queries. That's number one. Number two, in the CFO organization, given uh, that CFOs have to go through a lot of, you know, PNL data and a lot of numbers uh, and a lot of other uh, insights, uh, there used to be a team which used to develop our quarterly results. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, prepare the uh, remarks for our uh, CFO. We deployed uh, generative AI, which was a conversational BI, uh, which now really you know extracts all the data from the PNL, prepares the report, and also answers real-time questions that a CFO or any of his team members might have. Now again, this is internal to EXL uh, that we developed. So you know, when we started developing these use cases it was easier for us to really communicate to the uh, employees and also showcase to our uh, you know, uh, customers. So those are a few things that you do to really keep abreast of what's happening in the technology world. Sure. Yeah. That's great. Raul, thank you so much. Great insights. Really appreciate you sitting down with me to discuss the nuances of generative AI. No, thank you so much, Simon, for your time. And I'm glad we could do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that brings to a close this conversation. But if you'd like to learn more about some of the themes discussed today, please do check out the CCW Europe website and social media channels. Thank you so much again to Raul for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, goodbye.